It isn't news to any of us here that we're living in a time of environmental crisis that hasn't been seen in the history of the earth. While it's true there are still some skeptics, most scientists today believe that the earth's climate is changing dramatically and that this change is caused by the earth on average becoming warmer. Most scientists have concluded that there is more than a 95% probability that human activities over the last 50 years is what has caused this warming of our planet. The basic science, I'm not a scientist, I was a kindergarten teacher, but here we go. The basic science is that our atmosphere traps the heat that comes in from the sun and that certain gases and the ones that most people talk about, carbon dioxide and methane, block, they get into the atmosphere and they block the heat from going back up and leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and this is called the greenhouse effect. I'm sure you all know this, but just in case. Um, and while, while carbon dioxide is produced naturally, um, humans have increased the amount of carbon dioxide on the earth by 47% since the beginning of the industrial revolution. That's a lot, that's almost half. Um, as these gases increase, the earth is just going to continue to get warmer and warmer. And as anybody who's looked at the news knows, um, that's leading to glacier melts, increasing sea levels and climate extremes. So, sort of, that's definitely news, but does this mean that climate change is inevitable? Uh, is it possible to stop climate change? And I, I, what I read is that we just don't know, you know, this has not happened before. But most scientists have concluded that uh, climate change can definitely be slowed. But to avoid the worst consequences of climate change, we need to, read, to reach a net zero carbon emissions by the year 2050 or sooner. The big question is, one of many big questions is, can we as individuals working together make a difference in slowing down climate change and its destructive effects? The answer now in 2020 is yes that we humans can decrease our carbon footprint, um, the total amount of greenhouse emissions from human activity, that it's possible. But the big question is, um, will we make the effort required from us to have this happen? And that leads us into sort of the meat of our workshop which is um, talking about what we as individuals, concrete specific ways that we as individuals can begin to work as individuals and as a community um, to decrease carbon emissions. And I pass that on to Jackie. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what we've done at the meeting house. Um, we have traveled a long way in our collective physical and social situation since our peace and social concerns process in February, less than a year ago. Climate change was our meeting's top concern among others, including racial justice. The Climate Justice Working Group formed to work on this issue. Initially, we are focusing our efforts on two areas, CO2 reductions for operating the meeting house and what each of us can do personally to cut carbon. As we go through the slides that I'm gonna show you, please be a pen and paper handy to make note of the things you consider making a commitment to doing to cut carbon. We have put the Stewardship 7 action menu on the State College Friends Meeting House website. In 2014, the solar panels were put on the Meeting House after the Tuttle family bequeathed money to meeting and business meeting reached unity that the solar installation would have been approved of by Carolyn Russ. Our working group's first task was to have Infinity, the company who installed the photovoltaic system, 
do an energy audit since this hadn't been done. The on-site assessment was carried out Friday, August 28th, and later this month, we will receive Invinity's written report listing priorities for the building's energy savings, estimates of the priorities for upgrades, which will give us the most CO2 savings for the money spent, and waste less energy. And we will have a final meeting with Invinity to answer any questions we might have. And then it's up to our meeting members to decide uh, what we do, what we spend money on, or if we spend money on upgrades. And the Climate Justice Working Group also plans to assess the eco rating of the meeting house with online calculators through cool congregations and Quaker Earth Care Witness. And um, then we just wanted to talk about these seven uh, effective carbon reduction areas that have actions that you can personally take to um, cut carbon in your own lives. And hopefully we do this as a community and um, can see what other people pick and talk each other through how that goes. Um, with this menu of choices, we hope to inspire each person to, remove, to move from wherever they are, one action step at a time down the mountain of CO2 reduction. Um, we realize that each step seems small, but in, in accumulation, we hope that it'll really make a difference. So the first stewardship choice is um, supporting gender equity. In the three ways that follow, um, we could have, if we supported women, we could have a billion fewer people on the earth in, by 2100. Um, and that'll make a big difference in you know, demand and resources, in food. Um, so one of the ways is to treat women equally as professional farmers. They produce in low-income countries 60 to 80 percent of the food um, that's grown, and they don't have enough control, ownership, and loan um, giving to them. So that would be helpful. So if you can support organizations that promote, you know, women farmers, that's great. Um, making birth control and medical care more available to women around the world. Ensuring that women have education around the world. 130 million women are denied access to school, and that was before COVID hit. Okay. Um, the second choice is around travel. If you can avoid it, don't fly. And now that we're, you know, flying less because of COVID, we're finding out telecommuting works pretty well. Um, or take a train. And this was, you know, obviously before COVID, we have to think differently now, but, um, and if you must fly, offset your carbon emissions by funding an equivalent CO2 savings. Now there are several different um, organizations that either plant trees or do other things that um, offset CO2 for um, both cars and, and any kind of transportation. Um, one transatlantic flight equals 1.6 tons of CO2. That's a lot. Uh, walk or bike if you can, if you must drive, use an electric car, second best is a hybrid, or go car free, car share, or use public transport. So we can all probably make some different choices with our transportation. Third choice is around food. Eating more meat free, meat, meat -free meals, trying to cut down uh, gradually to reduce your meat consumption by half. And I have some statistics about um, meat eating. An average meat eater uh, in a year eats 2.5 tons worth of CO2 emissions. A meat lover would be 3.3 tons of CO2. No beef at all is 1.9 tons. Vegetarian is 1.7 tons. And vegan is 1.5 tons. So if you eat a vegan diet for a year, that's less than one transatlantic round trip on, on the plane. So you can see it makes a lot of difference. Uh, some other things you can do is buy local or organic, grow your own like a climate victory garden or join a CSA. Um, at the grocery store, choose local and regional, uh, limit food waste and compost any remainder back into the soil. Home energy is another area, um, and 
we've listed some steps here. There are other ones you could take. Um, getting an energy audit like we're doing at the meeting house helps with houses too. You can really find out where your energy leaks are and then work as on those as priorities. Insulating your home, tightening or replacing windows or using storm windows, using thermal shades or curtains, cooling without air conditioning by planting shade trees or using ceiling fans, opening the windows at night and closing them during the day, uh, buying Energy Star low rated appliances when you need new ones, installing a programmable thermostat or setting it manually um, to 68 or lower for daytime, we're talking about winter now, and um, 58 to 62 at night, so you can change it by hand. Using LED light bulbs, unplugging electronics when not in use, washing your cold clothes in cold water and line drying in the summer outside, and then inside using winter um, wooden clothes racks or for less time in the dryer using uh, woolen dryer balls. Just anything to cut um, heat, usually any um, appliance that produces heat. Um, okay, so some other choices would be around um, renewable energy. Installing solar panels, that's a great statement for all your neighbors and they're becoming more affordable. Uh, switching to wind generated electricity instead of getting um, you know, going to a power plant for coal or more likely gas now in Pennsylvania, generated electricity, you can switch over to wind generated uh, or other renewable sources. And swapping your furnace out for an electric heat pump. Changing your fossil fuel gas stove to a wind power generated electric stove. It not only lowers indoor air pollution, but it also cuts the um, methane leaks from around the gas wells if you're not supporting gas. So another choice is um, choices around money. What happens, you know, what are we funding with our money? Um, so investing in renewable energy, uh, divesting from fossil fuels, supporting divestment movements for organizations. If you have an investment portfolio, checking to find out if it has filters for fossil fuels. Also checking with your banks and life insurance since you have money in savings perhaps or in life insurance, where are they investing? Asking them not to invest in fossil fuels uh, and letting industries know you care about climate change. And that leads us to the last choice area, which is using your voice, getting politically active and voting, that's coming up, um, for leaders in all levels of government who take climate change seriously, supporting the youth climate movement their futures are at stake and they have the most to lose over their lifetimes. Um, having climate conversations to engage people all around you to care for climate, um, how you're caring for climate. We are going to, as far as choices around money, uh, we're gonna be researching um, some of, there's an organization in Philadelphia yearly meeting. And then um, I saw a notice for the National Association for Advancement of Colored People have information up about climate justice. And we're gonna um, be looking at those and uh, looking at ethical uh, social investing alternatives and trying to post those um, good resources for people to consider. Okay, so our last slide is leaving our meeting house. And um, we, already uh, shared this through PYM's uh, Eco-Justice Collaborative webinar. And the reason we're taping this um, presentation is we hope to put it up so that more people can access it um, on the web. And we hope also to take these suggestions to a wider local audience eventually. It is clear that we all need to work together and do all that we can to reverse current cultural norms that contribute to climate change. Walking softly on the earth and leaving a minimal footprint has always been important to me, and I try to live simply and intentionally. It felt good about doing my share, so to speak. But the last couple of years in my work at the State College Friends School, I realized that it's not enough. Many of these young students are very worried about the future and what will happen to our earth home. 
Hearing their concern at such a young age brought me much sadness and remorse. How can we see these children's anxiety about the future and not do all we can to turn the tide? It is so easy to look at the problem and feel overwhelmed and hopeless. What difference can I possibly make? Acting alone is hard, so we invite you to join with us and the countless people and organizations locally and worldwide working together to mitigate the effects of climate change. The most effective way to combat climate change is to compel government, corporations, universities, and other powerful institutions to revise their policies which contribute to climate change, either directly or through their investments in companies which are responsible for substantial amounts of carbon being released into the atmosphere. Significant and wide ranging changes are needed in our country and around the world to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It is important to stay informed about current issues and policies being decided upon locally and nationally. Educating ourselves and others and finding ways to take action can help lead to these needed changes. Each person needs to examine their personal carbon footprint and make lifestyle changes. While it may not be as far reaching as policy change, for many it is a starting point and a, the cumulative effect of many people making lifestyle changes can have a positive impact. Share your choices and commitments with others, which can influence change in an ever-growing community. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can encourage, support, and inspire one another. Together, we can use our collective moral and political weight to compel institutions of power to make the changes needed to reduce climate change. Together, we can make the changes in our own lives to reduce our collective carbon footprint. Together, we can celebrate our successes and work through challenges. Together, we can improve the health of our planet for the youth of the world. So we hope you will join with us and invite others to join with us as well. The more people, the more progress we will see. Every step, no matter how large or small, is important. We are all in different places in our lives, living in different circumstances. Only you can decide what you are able to do. Think about where you are now and how you can stretch yourself to the next level. Once you've completed one step, repeat the process again and again. With each person stretching a bit to make changes, as a collective entity, we will be working together toward a brighter future for all. Thanks for joining us today and good luck with your work toward climate justice. We hope you'll join us in the fight for climate justice. If you'd like to join the Climate Justice Working Group, contact teachmspc at gmail.com for more information. To download the short form of the Stewardship 7 Individual Climate Actions, visit the link below.